Hey everybody, Mike Ciparini of Chippers Island Adventures, and today I'm going to discuss some of the latest upgrades and add-ons that I've done to my Integra Odyssey 24B. <laughs> So today I'm going to talk about some of the things that I've added on to my rig along with a couple little fixes I did. So the first thing I like to discuss is the fix that happened in Indiana. Now when I went to Indiana it was to have some of my slide repaired because the motor harness wasn't long enough and I've talked about this in other videos. While I was there Ori Yoda noticed that one of my slide seals was missing. Now, I'm not referring to the slide seal underneath. Not under here. There's supposed to be a seal like right here. What I'm talking about is this seal. And that seal runs top to bottom on the rig. That was missing. There's another one on the inside of the slide uh, whatever you call it, the lip, I'll call it. And that seal was there. And Ori stated the track was here, but the seal wasn't. So what he stated was it, it should be there. And the, this one was missing along with the other one on the back of the slide. So he went ahead and he had some bubble seal and he put it on. And basically... He attached it with one screw right here that goes up and under. You don't even know it's there. And that holds it. That holds the seal from sliding out. So now when this closes, the two seals, this seal and this seal, basically seal the whole rig. And that is front and rear of the slide. So to me, that was a big plus. And... Um, uh, I'm really appreciative that Ori caught that. Now, as far as the seal under the slide that Jayco has put out a recall on, I opted not to go with that because truly, I believe, in order to do that right, you'd have to pull the whole slide off, and I'm not doing that. So I opted out. I don't need to do that, I figured. So... The next thing I want to talk about is inside. It's only a little thing, but let's check it out. And that is this. Under the dinette table, Matt is always on this from Matt's RV Reviews. I finally added a piano hinge. So now, as you can see, the board doesn't come apart. The other thing I also added, is you can see, I added tape over some holes. And that what that is, is that's strips of flex seal that I added. And there were existing holes there that I believe the seal outside would have covered it up. And I just did it from the inside. So that's two things. One is I added the tape over those holes. And you can actually see where the tape bubbled up right here. And that's the hole. And uh, I believe this flex seal did a good job with that. And uh, like I said, and I also added the piano hinge, which makes it a lot easier. Now I'm going to, I'm going to use this area for storage, but I'm just not sure as to what yet, because it's going to be storage it's going to be storage that I don't need to access that often. So we'll see what I put there later. The next two things are similar to each other, and they're regarding the beds. Now, I'm able to sleep on these beds. I don't find them all that uncomfortable. But they're certainly not well within comfort. But I can handle it. However, what I decided to do was on the top bunk over here, I used to take sheets and do the whole 
the whole bunt. What I did is I went out and got a three inch memory foam, full size, and you can see it right here. And I put that on. Now what I just make is the memory foam. And I'll tell you, the comfort level increased dramatically. So what I did is I put a three inch memory foam up there, full size, and then on the folding bed, the queen size bed, I got, I believe it's two or two and a half inch, and put that, and again, what a difference it made on this bed. So all I needed was a couple inches more of, of padding on that bed, and it made it hugely more comfortable. And up here, I went with a three inch because I wanted to make it up as its own little mattress. So I figured the thicker, the better. I didn't want to go four because I didn't want to come up too high, but three inches worked out really well. On my last trip, I slept up here. I also slept in the other bed and I slept like a rock in both beds. Very, very comfortable. Okay, so the next two items deal with electrical. And the first item is under the TV. What I wanted was an additional couple of plugs. And what I went with was this little surge protector right here. And I'll tell you, this thing's awesome. It's, it has eight outlets on it, along with four USB. All I did was I took it and Velcroed it down with a strip of Velcro onto the table, the end table in here. And because if you think about it, I use Apple TV, I have to plug it in, and the TV itself, just that maxes out the single outlet in back of that TV. So having eight additional outlets, right now I have my GoPro battery charger on there, along with, I have my iWatch battery charger. And so it works out pretty good. It's a nice little add-on right there. And it's small and it's compact, which makes it nice. The next electrical component is my NOCO. Now this thing's pretty cool. This is the NOCO Boost HD GB70. And it's a 2000 amp. My understanding is this will jump start an 8 liter engine, which is more than enough for the, I, what is it, 7.3 Godzilla engine in the Ford E450. So it's good for up to an 8 liter engine. Uh, it's a lithium battery, so it stays pretty well. It has a light on it. You can see it's showing that it's fully charged right now. I'm going to turn that off. Not only that, it also has a couple of ports back here. So if you needed to charge your phone, you could do it right off of this. I just feel safer having a boost on board because I keep seeing posts online uh, where somebody's engine won't start or, or things of that nature. And you know, when you're not using your rig, it doesn't need to stay on board. You can use it for other things. So it's a nice jump starter, along with a couple other things you can use it for. And uh, it comes with a couple accessories. And I think it was a nice upgrade. I feel, I definitely feel safer having it with me. And here's the next item. This is a rigid blower. And it's a small handheld that runs off the same battery that I use for my drill and my light, a flashlight that is, along with a couple other little things. And this little thing works great. I'll do a little demonstration now. I've been to campgrounds where you get a lot of pine needles on your roof. 
and before you put your slide in of course you want to get all that off and this would be great and that's why I got it so I could blow off the pine needles or maybe blow off the mat at your campground keep everything nice and neat so it doesn't get tracked into your rig and um, it's short money I got a link right here but you don't have to get just rigid I like rigid because I have a lot of their tools so the batteries are interchangeable so I just go with that but I believe Ryobi has the same thing so the next item that I upgraded to was this water filter system this is a two-stage water filter system and I ordered this here's the link and I ordered this along with the blue hose now the only problem is the blue hose doesn't extend far enough for me to lean the water filter up against my tire it's just a little short so I'm gonna get something like a kickstand or a hinge something or other in order to brace that water filter but it is a two-stage which I feel better off having than just one of those single inline uh, hose filters and uh, you know I I think it's a good thing to have the filters are very easy to get they're very standard and this thing I've used it my last trip and it worked great I'll be using it again soon the only thing is like I said I'd like to get something I could put a couple screws on my rig and just hang it but I'd rather have it on the ground with a little kickstand so it's sitting more vertical and um, we'll see how that goes uh, that's another project coming up soon okay here I am at the back of my rig and there's two things back here I want to show you that I, I recently purchased one of them you really can't see and that is this swagman bike rack that I have and it has a team obsidian bike cover now right now I only have one bike on here and it's an e-bike it's electric bike XP 2.0 and I'm going to put the other one on here uh, before I go on my next trip, which is very soon. But I'm going to do a little video on this Swagman bike rack. It's rated for e-bikes and it's rated for RVs. Apparently, when you RV in and you have e-bikes on the back of your rig, it has to be a specially rated uh, bike rack. So that's something I'm going to do a little bit later. Uh, as far as doing a full-blown video on it it won't be that long but it will be more dedicated to that bike rack I'll have the the bikes off I'll show how I put it on and the other thing is the Chippers Island logo which came out outstanding I got to give kudos to two people one being my daughter Lexi who designed the logo itself and two to Kevin St. Peter of K&D Signs who produced this and mounted it on the Odyssey and I love having that on there it helps advertise the channel a little bit and uh, thank you Kevin and thank you Lexi looks great by the way I want to say if you see me on the road and especially if you can get a picture of me on the road let me know and I will send you a free t-shirt so if you see me on the road and I'm identifiable by this logo go ahead and send me a text put a comment on the YouTube channel something to that effect and we'll go ahead and get the necessary information and I'll send you a free t-shirt so the next item I'd like to show you is this new chair I actually got two of them they're both from BJ's Wholesale Club and they only cost $32 a piece you know I, I want to have four chairs on board the one one chair I have is a Yeti and that thing is super comfortable but it's a little bit pricey and then I wanted to have two chairs like this and then one chair of a different design that I'm looking at unfortunately I can't fit gravity 
chairs on board in the compartment where I put these chairs. They just do not fit. I could take a gravity chair, of course, and put it inside, and that's fine. But I would like to have four chairs in, so I bought, picked up two of these recently. And they're nice construction. They fold up nicely, and they, what I like is they actually have arms on them. And, get this, they actually have a little cup holder. I don't know, nothing fancy. It's pretty comfortable. I could sit in this a while. I just like the fact it has the, uh, the rigid arms on it. I'm kind of going with a blue theme. So when I put everything out on my next trip, you'll see what I'm saying. But they are pretty good for 32 bucks. I don't think you can go wrong. BJ's Wholesale Club. Before I discuss my last item, let me just go ahead and say, if you like these videos, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Likes and comments always boost the algorithm and all that good stuff that YouTube deals with. So feel free. Like I said, if you see me out on the road, shoot me a text or something, I'll get you a free t-shirt. Chippers Island Adventures. Now the last item I have I thought about this, I researched it long and hard, and it deals with the battery. I was looking at lithium, but what was scaring me off with lithium is of course, A, the price, but B, that there were other things that you would need to replace, such as the charger converter would need to be replaced. There are other things that you would need in order to accommodate installing lithium batteries so i really wanted at least 200 amps in there so what i did is i went agm i got this agm battery from vmax i believe the item number is slr 200 and that guy fits right in there perfectly on the odyssey 24b and as you can see, there is nothing else in there. I didn't have to add anything. The, all the cables fit perfectly. You know, I had to do a little finagling. The only thing in the middle of the battery tray is a divider that holds in two batteries. So that's why your battery, if you only have one, sits to either the right or the left side. Well, I had to cut that out. And actually, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is cut down along the side of the battery tray on both ends of it, and then hit it out with a hammer and it comes right out. And you'll probably need a multi-tool with a metal cutter on it. Just be very careful you don't hit the other uh, the connections or shunts. But this is the VMAX tanks, and it's VMAX.com, so pu I put a link up. And these batteries were supposedly made for military tanks. So they're more military grade, so they can take a bit of a beating. And Lord knows they're bouncing around in there a little bit, you know, or they're being bounced, so to speak. So that battery, when I boondocked recently, I didn't have any problems at all. So I'm real happy so far with this 200 amp hour battery. Uh, I don't go boondocking a lot. I would still like to get some solar panels, but that's up in the air. You know, we'll see. And so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that thumbs up and like button, along with subscribe to my channel. And maybe you'll be picking up some of these items yourself. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer any questions there are. And with all that, all the best to all, and happy RVs.